hold on, COVID break. <sighs> Named, can't remember. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my February wrap-up for 2023 I read a total of five books this month so without further ado let us get started the first book that I have is fake it to the limit by Mary frame I gave this book a four out of five stars this follows Charlotte and her younger sister Paige who are on the run from their con artist parents. Charlotte makes a deal with a psychic named Ruby who agrees to let her get her shop up and running while she travels for four months. As she settles in she meets the local residents and somebody wandering by asks for a reading and trying to make ends meet Charlotte decides that she is going to impersonate Ruby and make a little extra cash. When her reading ends up being a little bit too accurate. She is enlisted by the local deputy to try to solve an ongoing investigation and it's like the story of that. I honestly wasn't expecting too much from this book. It's from Kindle Unlimited and it doesn't have like huge high ratings but I actually really enjoyed it. I think that it had a really fun cast of characters and I loved learning more about each of them as the story progressed. Tabby and Troy were both great side characters. I think that they really brought the comic relief to the story which I really appreciated. I think that they both had very unique personalities and I would love to see more of them in the rest of the series. I also really liked Jared as the love interest. I really enjoyed the will they won't they vibes of their relationship. I also really liked the small town setting and how everybody literally knew everything about one another. They were all up in each other's business and it was so much fun. I'm definitely intrigued to see where the story goes in the next book since we're left on such a huge cliffhanger except it's not available on Kindle Limited which sucks. It's like a purchase thing and I don't really want to purchase it if I'm already paying for Kindle Unlimited so I'm gonna just need it to show up on Kindle Unlimited real quick. But yeah I enjoyed it. It was a four out of five stars for me. Next book I have is Love and Other Great Disasters by Becky Dean. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. After a knee injury that changes the course of her life, Britt Hansen embarks on a little scavenger hunt based off of British literature. The hunt is across England and she is competing against three of her classmates. The grand prize is $100,000 which she is hoping to win to put towards her college tuition. Along the way she meets a boy who joins her on her journey of self-discovery and it's that story. I related a lot to Brit in the aspect of her knee injury ending her soccer career. I got a nasty concussion which ended my basketball career so I definitely felt the loss of identity with her. But that is honestly where my enjoyment of her character ended. I just found her very whiny and annoying as the story went on. I just could not care less about her. The concept of the book was what originally intrigued me to it. I think that a competitive scavenger hunt across Britain was really cool, but I just didn't really care about any of the characters. I was a little bit bored throughout the entire thing. I didn't think anything was that exciting with the story. I also didn't think that Luke and Britt had any chemistry whatsoever, so I wasn't even rooting for their romance. I just think that the story was very one note for me, so I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Submission by L.K. Shaw, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Penny Stevens, who is interested in the BDSM community, and so she decides to go to an event one night. There she meets a dom named Marcus who she is instantly drawn to and they enter a relationship but she quickly realizes that she may be in over her head when a dangerous man named Evan starts lurking around. I enjoyed this for the most part although I do think that it became a little convoluted at times. We get alternating points of views but the chapters aren't labeled with whose point of view you're reading from so you kind of have to guess based off of the context that's going on. I liked Penny for most of the book except the end Ending when the big twist is revealed. I just didn't really understand the things that she did. I also thought Marcus was very interesting except his backstory was very confusing at times especially as more things were coming to light. I did like the relationship between Marcus and Penny though. I think that he was very patient with her learning the lifestyle and all the new experiences that came with it. I really like the side characters of Bridget, Donovan, and Connor. I think that they were very interesting and I really want to see more of them in the rest of the series, but I ended up giving this one a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is Wild Blood by Lauren Blackwood and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. 
This follows Victoria who was kidnapped by the Exotic Land Trading Company when she was only six years old. She is a wild blood which means that she is a hot commodity and she is now 18 years old and her one dream is to escape the touring company. The only way to do this would be to earn a promotion over her ex-best friend and lover, Dean, who betrayed her. When the opportunity to impress her boss's newest conquest, a gold miner named Thorn, arises, Victoria must use her magic to secure her freedom. I enjoyed this a lot more than other people seem to enjoy it. I listened to it on audiobook so I'm not sure if that is the reason behind it but I think that the narrator did such a great job with telling the story and the characters voices. I think that the pacing was really well done and I was definitely curious to see where the story was going to end up. I for one really loved the jungle setting. I think that the creatures were terrifying and I really loved learning all of their protection methods. I was so intrigued by the wild bloods and the river mama and the shadow creatures, especially little bigs. He was so precious and I wish that there was more of a focus on that rather than the romance aspect of the story. I also wish that there was more backstory and explanation of what a wild blood is and the magic that they possess because I am still a little bit confused with what that consists of. I also think that the conversations of ecotourism, human trafficking, and power dynamics could have been dived into a little bit deeper but I do see where the author was going with it. I really enjoyed Victoria's character. I thought she was such a strong personality and I love the found family trope so I loved watching her protect her boys so fiercely. I wasn't the biggest fan of the insta love in this. I wish there was more of a focus on the actual mission rather than the love affair. Honestly I was way more interested in her toxic relationship with Dean than I was with Thorn so take that as you will but I did really enjoy the story so I gave it a four out of five stars. And then the final book that I have to talk about is The Queen of Volts by Amanda Foody. This is the third installment in the Ace of Spades trilogy. It is finally over and I'm so upset about it, but I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This picks up right where King of Fools leaves off, and like I said, I am so upset that it's over, but I did really enjoy how the story ended. I'm going to miss these characters so much, though. We all know at this point how much I love morally gray characters, and this was chock full of them. There are five points of views in this, and I really love learning more about Sophia, Harvey, and Lola alongside Anne and Levi this time around. I loved the twist to the original Shadow game in this. Basically, 22 of the most notorious players in New Rayens had to compete with each other to obtain five playing cards. Each card was tied to a player, and each player's card had a name across it that told them who their target was. They either had to kill the player in order to obtain the card or convince the player to give their card willingly, which would then tie that player's life to the player who had the card now. If the player who had your card died, it meant that you also died. I was so intrigued by this concept and was so obsessed with trying to figure out who was going to come up victorious. I think that N is probably one of my favorite characters in this trilogy. I think that her character development was so well done and I loved learning about the final puzzle pieces of her character in this story. The roller coaster of a relationship that N and Levi have in this trilogy was so well done. I was so invested in where they were going to end up. It was just so complicated and I couldn't get enough of it. I loved the friends to lovers to enemies to maybe lovers to I don't even know what's going on arc that they had. I was just rooting for them so hard in this so it was just really well done. Lola on the other hand I was not the biggest fan of in this which was such a disappointment because she was one of my favorite characters in the previous book. Harvey was an intriguing character but I think he pissed me off more times than not in this. Sophia was another character that I really liked. I think that her backstory was very interesting to learn more about and I'm always a sucker for Levi, so that's no surprise. If you have not read this trilogy yet, highly recommend it. Take this as your sign to read it. It is such an underrated series, in my opinion. Please pick it up. All right, everybody, so those were the five books that I read for the month of February 2023. I'm sorry it took me so long to upload this. I am currently on the end swing of COVID, so 
wasn't really in the mood to film when I'm hawking up along, you know? But we're back, we're here. My March TBR will be up soon. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>